Good morning. This is Jim Moore, and you are watching Words of Encouragement. And this is program number 569, Even So, Lord, Come. That's a prayer, right? It's a prayer we want to make. And uh, so I'm wearing my t-shirt this morning. Prayer runs in my family. I love this t-shirt. My daughter got this for me. Yeah, because it does. We believe in prayer. We believe in uh, doing what the Lord said, to watch and pray. And good morning, Carmen. Nice to have you this morning. And so, yeah, I'm in a little bit different. You notice uh, the background here is a little bit different than it normally is. That's because I'm not in my RV. And um, the reason I'm not in my RV is because the propane ran out this morning. So uh, it's extremely cold in there. And so I was not watching uh, the level of my propane. So, you know, again, not to turn everything into something prophetic, but Jesus said, watch and pray. If you don't watch things, they have a, a tendency of getting away from you. Angie, God bless you. So, uh, yeah, I'm sitting here in my in my home, my beautiful home, where it's warm. And I've got my little coffee cup here that I like to show people. And I got it for two reasons. Number one, because it's white. Some people don't like white because that says it shows up the dirt. That's exactly why I like it. I want to keep it clean. I don't want something that masks the dirt for a long time and then one day it's so dirty you can't avoid it. No, I want to see it so I can keep it clean. Hello, sister. God bless you. Yo les bendiga, hermana. All right, and then uh, and also because it's got this man on it. I got the worshiping man. No, I'm not getting paid by Hydro Flask. I'm, it's a free advertisement. I haven't learned how to get paid for stuff like that. But I love the worshiping man on it. and um, Or it could be a woman. It could be anyone. Don't want to be sexist. God forbid. <clears throat> but um, I'll tell you a real quick story before we get into the Word today. Uh, one time I was walking in the house of prayer. Hi, Debbie. God bless you. Linda, God bless you guys. And I'm walking back and forth, as I often would do when I pray. Good morning. And... Um, and the Lord suddenly, I went into a vision, and I, I saw a big X, okay? And I heard the Lord say, X marks the spot. That's like, you know, buried treasure kind of a thing, right? You know, there is a treasure to be found in the place of prayer. And good morning, my love. Hallelujah, nice to have you. Um, there is a treasure to be found in the, you know, X marks the spot. And so, you know, on the old maps, you know, the pirate maps and all that, X. And so I see this X, and it's a, it's a vision I'm having, and the Lord says, X marks the spot. And, and as I'm looking at it, wondering what, maybe he's got a treasure map for me or something, I don't know. The X turns into a person whose hands are out like this, and his feet spread apart. And the Lord was telling me, he says, when you worship, X marks the spot. When you stand and you worship or sit or whatever, and you stretch out your hands to him as he commanded in the Bible to do. It's not just like, oh, we do that because it's fun or everyone else is doing. No, he said, lift up your holy hands, right? So he says, I that he says that to me, that's X marks the spot. I go after that. That is attractive to me. Gene, God bless you. Nice to have you. So um, so when I saw this little guy, that was a pretty close example of what I saw in that vision years ago. Mikey, God bless you. X marks the spot. The Lord says, you're my treasure. You are my treasure. And when you make yourself a big target, I come to you. You know, he doesn't, like the song says, uh, you don't always come as easy as some, but I'll watch and pray. You're worth it. If that's all I said today, that would be enough. Make yourself a big target for the Lord. Stand in his presence. And make yourself a big X and say, Lord, here I am. Come and get me. Encounter me with your presence. We're going to do our, our Song of Songs uh, study tonight uh, for those who signed up. And I just want to encourage you, you know, don't just go through the motions. Don't just read through the book so that you can say you read through the book. Go after God. It's a vehicle to take you to Him. Okay? So is this program. So... So is your church. And I mean, this, these things are not like boxes we check. Okay, I did this. And I do that sometimes, right? I don't know if anybody else does that. But I get up in the morning and I got a bunch of boxes to check off. You know, I have to do important things like make my coffee, right? Anyway, I'm 
just it, but there's you know things that we just we got to do every day and that's all well and good but you know he wants to be your number one he wants to be the one that you come to even when you don't feel like it as a matter of fact I think it means more to the Lord when you come to him when you don't feel like it and when you are standing and making yourself a big target in worship and in prayer and so on and still it doesn't seem like you're getting anywhere you're not hitting pay dirt those are the times you know the Lord knows that anybody standing in heaven I mean nobody in heaven is like bored or disconnected you know when they're in the manifested glory of the Lord but the Lord he knows that sometimes it's difficult and that is a greater level of investment than you'll never be able to invest on the same level in heaven as you do on earth because he knows that it is a challenge and I think it really matters to him when you go after that amen so make yourself a big target today all right message number one that was three all right I'm gonna make a quick announcement well I got a few people on here don't be mad okay don't be sad but I'm gonna take some time off I'm gonna give myself permission to take this week off this is Thanksgiving week and um, I was thinking about waiting a couple days. Good morning, Monty, my friend. It's so good to have you. Uh, but I feel like I'm going to give myself permission to take a break, okay? So this will be the last day until the following Monday. So I, yes, I'm going to take really a whole week off. It's For me, it's only a few days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, four days. But uh, since I don't come on till Monday, I have the weekends off anyway. So don't be upset. You probably won't be. Okay, we all need a break. We all need a vacation. I hope you get to take one too. But I really feel the need. I've been battling some things in my body and so on. So anyway, but like the Lord said, nope, you 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 need to do it. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. And I might get up tomorrow and wish I hadn't done. Who knows? You know, but that's what we do, right? We just do our best to listen to the Lord. All right. So today's November twenty first. Isn't the time screaming by? It's crazy. Um. Behold, I am coming. All right, even so, Lord, come. Now, this is a prayer. I want you, if you have your Bible, all three passages today are coming out of the book of Revelation. Last book of the Bible, not an accident uh, that, you know, it's it was put chronologically in the last book. Thanks, Deb. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, oh, and I do want to say, too, while I'm off uh, offline, uh, feel free if if you want to keep a morning routine. I don't, I don't know if anybody does this or not. But all of these videos, in case you've forgotten, 569 videos are on saved on Facebook. You can go back to a certain day, a certain title, whatever. So you can do that. All right. Why is this passage important to the Lord and to you? I'm so glad you asked. I watched two movies this weekend, and I want to strongly encourage you to watch them. Sometimes we read and we watch and we listen to things with a certain level of bias. And um, I always have my own biases too, I'm sure you do as well. But the two movies I watched, one was the opening of uh, season three of The Chosen. Now I know there's been some debate about uh, Mormonism and all that, you know what, just hang that up for a moment. Forget about that. Go see one of the better, in my opinion, one of the better <clears throat> representations of who Jesus was and is, really is. Now, I believe there's a lot about the Lord we haven't seen. We have not seen the Jesus whose vesture is dipped in blood. You know, nobody does it perfect. Nobody. But I think the general spirit that I see on the actor that's portraying the Lord is one of one of the best I've ever seen that in the passion of Christ so I had that got extremely blessed and uh, I had to keep myself from bawling I have this medicine I've been putting in my eye and I couldn't cry it out <laughs> so I was like trying to hold, hold it back to where I'm not bawling my head off you know when I see a good presentation of Jesus it wrecks me I you know He's the one I love. I'm going to live eternally with him. He's the top of the list. Everybody else that I love with a great passion is because of him. Okay? Anyway, so that was good. Second movie I watched the very next day. So Saturday night and then Sunday morning, 
I was privileged to watch the movie, uh, the Sean Foyt um, a documentary called Super Spreader. Now, I'm not even going to go into that, but you need to watch it. You need to watch it. It brought so much back to me. And I'll tell you, it stirred up my spirit in a big way. Um, there are things that were done wrong and things that were done right during the last couple of years. But you need to just remember and, and watch and see what happens when we do nothing and see what happens when we do something and we act. All right. So having said all that, it's all about the Lord. Okay, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And Jesus is the main thing. The Bible is specific about this. In him, all things consist. He's at the epicenter. It, the Bible says he is the primary thing. And uh, he is the preeminent one is what the scripture says. So let's look at Revelation all through passages. Revelation 22, this issue, even so, Lord, come. I want to ask you a question right out of the gate. When was the last time you prayed that? I mean, sincerely prayed that. Now, I want to be transparent this morning. I don't pray that very often. I really don't. And uh, I have a heart for it. I want to see the Lord come. But I don't actually physically open my mouth and say it to the Lord Jesus. Now, it almost could seem self-serving or selfish to say that prayer. Had not the Lord put it in the scripture and had not the Lord himself said, do this. Okay, I want you to pray this. I do. I really do want you to, to want me to. We're back. I hope you're still there. So as always, I've said it many times in the past, sometimes our connection isn't working so hot. I did not expect that. Normally, if it goes off. Okay, I'm going to try something here. Please hang out with me. There we go. I'm going to shift my, sorry about that, don't mean to give you a headache, turn on something else and hopefully that will help it stay on. Yeah, sometimes I wonder when these things happen if it's the third or fourth time. Amen. All right. We must be hitting Peter today. All right. If the Lord had not. Not said. Now again, I want to say if it blurbs out like that, just stay there. It'll come back. Okay. In Jesus' name. If the Lord had not said this to pray this prayer, we might kind of feel like maybe it was a little bit selfish, but it's not. The Lord wants to return. Now, Jesus says he didn't know the hour of his return, and he hasn't changed his mind. That hasn't changed. I know some people. We tend to want to just make the Bible say what we want it to say. Well, that doesn't make sense to me, so I'm going to believe this. Don't do that. That's a huge mistake. <laughs> okay, you'll find that's a huge mistake. So he hasn't changed his mind about this. Jesus, when he walked the earth, said, only the Father knows the day of my returning. And I believe that's still the same today. So when the Lord says, pray, even so, Lord, come, he's not saying that because you know, if you pray it, then it's going to convince him to come. That's that's not the point. It's always about what it does in your heart. Okay, it generates something in your heart when you have desire that is alive, that you desire his return. Okay, and again, there's an improper kind of a desire and a righteous kind of desire. The improper one would be, I hate the world. I hate everybody in it. I'm so sick of everything. I just wish the Lord would come. Honestly, I, even though I understand that, <laughs> probably felt that way a couple of times, that's not the Lord. That's not how he feels, okay? We don't give ourselves a hall pass because my situation is worse than anybody understands. Okay, we come back to the Lord. This is the meaning of repentance. It means repent. Think in a way, again, re is again. Pent is where we get the word penthouse. It's the highest thought. Okay, think how the Lord, let your, as the heavens are higher above the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts, the Lord says. What, what does that mean? I want to lift my thoughts, which get demonstrated through my speech. I want to lift my thoughts up to where his thoughts are. And trust me, he's not like going, I am so, I am so sick of this world. I've seen it where people have said, the Lord is so sick of this. He's just going to come back because he's so tired. Of stuff. No, he's not. That's, that's, that's us making him into us, okay? That's not, 
The Bible says that he, he is not slack, as some men count slackness, but is patient, 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 okay, towards us, us toward, not willing that any should perish. So his patience is based, as it always is, in his love for humanity, okay? So why do we pray, Lord, come? People aren't saved. Because it is good for you to want him to return. And then there's the whole part about we can hasten the Lord's returning. And I'm not going to go into that right now. I just want to stick with the actual uh, coming part. All right, so the very first thing, let's look at the backdrop for this. Uh, Revelation 22, verses 12 through 15. Jesus, the Lord himself, if he were sitting right here in, next to me, where my wife normally sits, or across from me in this room, it would freak me out. You know, I expect one of these days I may open my eyes and the Lord is sitting in the chair in front of me. How would that change the way I talk? How would it change the way you and I listen? <laughs> okay, but this is him. If he were here right now, he would say the same thing that he said all these many years ago. Let's read what he said. He said, behold. Now, behold means take a look. It's not filler words. The Lord doesn't need filler words like, mm, ah, uh, uh, e, ah, uh, ooh. No, he doesn't do that. He's very precise in his speech. When he puts in a word, he does it reason. And this one says, behold, I am coming. Now, behold means what? If I went, behold, <laughs> behold, look at that, that beautiful Chevy over there. That would mean you stop and look at it. I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. I'm just saying, behold literally means to look at. It means to consider. It means to stop and think about something. Meditate upon it. Look on it longing. Look on it long and longing. Okay? So he says, Behold, I am coming. Now, typically what happens in life is we go through these seasons where we are anxious and excited about the Lord's return. Right? So we, you know, I remember as a young man, I would look up into the clouds. I literally... And uh, there was one of the old 70s Christian singers that would talk about uh, clouds. I can't keep my eyes off of those clouds in the sky because I know it won't be long. It won't be long. I can't remember who that was. It starts with a G. Somebody might remember who that was. Anyway, I was looking at the clouds all the time, literally, literally, literally. I'd sit and look up at them. Sometimes I'd go in a field and lay down on my back. Hi, David. And I just look up at the clouds and I would say, maybe it's today. I truly believe the Lord wants that desire to be alive in us always. Now, it isn't always, okay? And it's okay. Don't freak out, okay? But just because it isn't doesn't mean I have to settle for that. You understand? See, sometimes we're so quick to condemn ourselves we don't want to go there because we don't like the bad feeling that comes with it. And God says, hey, don't, don't beat yourself up about it. Just ask. Just ask. Okay? Say, Lord, I don't feel that same desire for your returning like I used to. I want that back. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, so you get what I'm saying? It's actually counterproductive for you to walk around dragging your lip on the ground feeling horrible about yourself because you don't have that. You know, ask. You get more because you ask more. All right, so Jesus says, I'm coming quickly. Now, again, there's the whole quickly means different to the Lord than it is to us. If you haven't settled that in your heart, you kind of have to because he's not going to change his mind about it. Sometimes quick to the Lord means today. Sometimes it means, you know, a day with the Lord is a thousand years. It could literally mean anything from a day to a thousand years. So, you got to settle that in your heart. We've talked about that a lot. Behold, I'm coming quickly. My reward is with me. Now, that's important. We, we tend to think, oh, I don't really care about rewards. Well, you should, because if he's doing it, it matters, right? He wouldn't be doing it if it didn't matter. So, we say we don't care about something that matters to him. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Sometimes we just latch on to these, these little sayings and stuff, and we don't really think them through. Okay, so it matters. So, it matters to me, too. I, I, if the Lord deems it important to reward me for righteous activity that was done through and by his grace, 
with a heart of motivation of love, then I then I care about it too. Okay, my reward is with me to give to every person according to their works. So he is watching in a good way. Okay, he is keeping track, keeping tally. God's a good bookkeeper. He says, not even a single cup of water that you give in my name to someone in love. Because if, if it's not done in love, the Bible says you there's no reward for it. So you got to check your motive. Okay, but not even a cup of cold water will lose its reward. That's how much it matters to him. Would to God, my, my you know, mattering, how would I say that? It mattering to me would be elevated to the place where it, it matches his, okay? And again, ask, just ask, Lord. You know, again, he's, he really does, he's not looking for you to come, you know, like I said, dragging your lip and, you know, lashing yourself on the back and I'm so terrible. No, not somebody's, he just wants you to ask. He just wants you to want it, enough to ask. All right, so he says, I'm bringing my Lord with me. I'm Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have right to eat of the tree of life and enter through the gates of the city, but outside of the city, heavenly city, are dogs and sorcerers, the sexually immoral, murderers, idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie. It freaks me out that the Lord puts lying in the same category as murder, okay, and incest. And, uh, you know, all these, you know, he, in other words, he throws the horrible because, see, we're the ones that gauge it like that, right? Okay, he, he mixes the horrible in with the not so horrible, and he says, you know what, I am the answer to both of those things. What I'm really looking for is for you to not be okay with it. That's what he's doing, okay? He's not saying, oh, you told a lie, you're done, okay? No, oh gosh, no. He's not okay with it, and he doesn't want you to be okay with it. That's the point, okay? All right, anyway. Okay, so the next verse is in Revelation 22. Now, if you're following along in the comment box of Facebook, you'll notice that a number of the words I have put all in caps, okay? Now, I'm not changing what is said, but capitalization, um, commas, periods, most of you already know this, italics, those are not things that are in the initial writing. In Hebrew, they didn't have capital and small and short. So when I put that in there, or even like the name Lord or Jesus, we capitalize names and so on and different things. That's not the way it is in Hebrew. So it's very simple. We're just, we're putting an emphasis on it because we're saying that we value that. Um, let's see, Mike, I hope we can advise on your life. Oh, thank you, Mikey. I appreciate that. I love you so much. And you are, you, you just, your love and your devotion, it matters a great deal to me. All right, so, um, so I've capitalized those phrases just to stand out. All right, so it says, I, Jesus, and again, who's talking? Yeah, disregard me, disregard whoever, but do not, do not disregard him and his words. One day, every word, every word, the good, the bad, the ugly, <laughs> they're not bad, they're not ugly, but you know what I'm saying. We value some things over other things. And I would say wisdom says, go to the things that you don't place a very high value on that the Lord said, and and. I don't mean make them your only. I mean, don't flip-flop, and now they're the only thing that matters and the, everything else doesn't. Bring into balance, okay? If if we're John 3.16, and we're all the scriptures that talk about all the blessings, all the good, and they're just like, ah, we can quote them, and they're, they're, they're up here in the value system, that's awesome. They should be, okay? I'm not, they should be. But what about the ones that aren't? What about the ones that we just kind of read real quick through, or you never hear somebody preach about, or... You know, you don't post them on Facebook because you know no, no one's going to like them. And yet, they're still the words in red, right? They're still his words. We need to bring those up in value without bringing the others down. All right, so some of these words are that. You know, some of the things that Jesus said to the churches were not, they weren't ones that were like, yeah, that's my favorite verse. That's my life verse. You know, repent or else I'll take away your candlestick. That's my life verse. No, it's not. But do I value it? Do I value it to the place? Oh, you get the point. I, Jesus, have sent my angel, could be messenger, but we're just going to take it face value, my angel, to testify to you the things 
in the churches. I love this, and I'll tell you why. God, we again, we have a kind of an ego thing sometimes, not being mean, but I've got it. You've probably got some of it too. Maybe a little pride sometimes that we don't think we have, where we look at something and, well, the Lord told me, the Lord told me. It's almost like it can get there. I know none of you are this way, but it can get there to where if he didn't tell you, you don't, you don't hear it. I was talking to someone just yesterday about this. One of the challenges between the pastoral and the prophetic, okay? Prophetic people tend to hear the Lord in very, you know, very strong terms. They get dreams and visions and so on. Now, the Bible says you can all prophesy, but I'm talking about someone who has the office of a prophet. And if you're not careful, one of the things you can do, and I remember it used to be this way in churches almost across the board. Some of you might remember this. Mike, you might remember this. Uh, uh, other, other of you who have been in the ministry. Prophets and pastors didn't get along hardly at all. I remember going to a meeting in um, uh, Colorado where Chuck Pierce and someone's, I happen to have a staff with me. It was, a, it was the funniest thing. And uh, they saw my staff. It was Chuck Pierce and, uh, and who, is, who is the other guy? I forget his name, the two that are together. Ah, some don't remember their name. They're in Texas here now. Um, anyway, they, they asked if they could borrow my staff, and I said, sure. And they said, well, we're going to do a prophetic act with it. And they addressed this issue, how that oftentimes prophets and pastors don't get along because a pastor is used to giving to the sheep things he or she hears directly from the Lord. So if the prophetic voice comes to the pastor and they have not heard what the prophetic voice is, it is very easy, and thankfully less common today, but it used to be very common and very easy to kind of just disregard that. It doesn't mean you don't like them, you don't, but you just kind of like, well, I'm going to wait till I hear that. So the prophet, the prophetic voice can take that as you don't respect me, you don't honor me, if you really loved me, if you really valued the gift of the Lord, you would receive this uh, as a word from the Lord. And so you get what I'm saying. There's a contention there. I love this verse about Jesus saying, I'm going to risk, as it were, my words in the mouth of someone else. Do we have enough humility to, to listen with sensitivity to the Lord speaking to us through a maybe even an undesirable vessel? Uh, one of the most profound words I ever received was from a homeless man. And today, it still shocks me to think about it. And I won't go into the whole story, but I basically had, uh, and thankfully, I actually already had the word from the Lord. I, I might have rejected it. Honestly, I probably would have rejected it. But I had just received this word from the Lord uh, minutes before and was basting in it and thinking about it. And I walked out on the street to get a cup of coffee and this very large man of color, an ex-football player, he knows who he is, said the exact same words that the Lord had just said to me through another person that I respected and admired. You see what I'm saying? God will not always do it your way. Are you listening to me? You've got to have enough humility to listen to him and say, well, maybe God is talking to me through someone that I don't even have a great level of value for. You get what I'm saying? So I'd say one of the greatest prophetic words I've ever gotten, I see my sister Deborah just come on. I've got some tremendous life-changing words from, from you, Deborah, but I've also got them from a homeless guy or from, from a child, a little child. We have to embrace humility. We serve a humble king, the God who is willing to entrust his word to a human being. Okay, do we have enough humility that matches his. We have enough humility that says, Lord, you know, send me a nationwide prophet. No, maybe he wants to send a child to you. Maybe he wants to use your husband or your wife. Maybe he wants to use someone that you don't even like very much. He can do it. He can do it. And we need to be open. All right. I, Jesus has sent my angel with this message. I am the root and the offspring of David. Now, this is a big deal. I can't take a lot of time with this, but David is the model for the kingdom of Jesus. If you haven't picked up on that in the Bible, you need to really do a study on that. It is stunning that the Lord used 
a broken man to exemplify what his kingdom is going to look like. It's not the only one. He also, there was Solomon, there are different ones. But he calls it the kingdom of David. He does, in more than one place. That is stunning, considering the different failures that David had. But he was a man after God. There are a lot of reasons why he was a man who loved uh, worship. He's a man who loved, you know, the, the tabernacle of David. I mean, the life of David is extremely important to understand in the context of the kingdom of Jesus that is currently advancing. And you and I, I believe many of us with our natural physical lives will live to see it established. I believe, well, I know there are going to be people on the earth who I'm starting to feel the Holy Spirit now. <laughs> there will be people on the earth. There will be one generation. Jesus said it will happen in one generation. A generation that will live to see with their physical eyes the Lord Jesus coming in the clouds. And you know, I just challenge people all the time. And I'm not ashamed to do it. I want to be kind about it. But listen, let's quit saying we believe something we don't believe. All right? Let's quit saying we believe in something that in our hearts we don't believe. Don't beat yourself up over it. But do allow the conviction of the Holy Spirit to drive you to your knees and say, Jesus, help me believe what I say I believe. Help me believe what your word says. You know? All right. So let's believe. He is going to one day... There will be a generation. At most generations believe it's their generation. That's cool. That's nothing wrong with that. I don't know for sure if it is. I'm living, trying to live like it is. I want to believe my eyes. Well, actually, my eyes will see his return. It may just be from the other side. Okay. The Behold, the Lord is coming with 10,000s of his saints. I may be one of those guys on a white horse sitting right next to you, my sister Deborah, and we're shouting all the way, right? Come on. Well, we're just being warned to say, devil, your time is up. Or I may be on the earth. Somebody's going to see him come. Someone's going to, with their eyeballs, going to see him in the clouds. It's not a fantasy. It's not a fairy tale. It's real. And when you have that desire in your heart, I know it wanes. I know that the, the fire of passion for that dims. Sometimes we just have to get some more fuel on the fire, Right. You know, if, if I go out and I make a fire out in the backyard and I don't keep throwing wood, I have to keep putting fuel on that fire. It's not a eternal flame. <laughs> I mean, it is, you know what I'm saying. All right. So if you don't have it, don't, you know, oh, I'm a worm, I'm terrible, I'm awful, I'll never be any different. You know, that's the devil. That's just Satan. Don't give, don't give you know, words, don't, don't give voice to the thoughts he puts in your head. Reject that. No, I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of, I'm a child of the king. I am a king and a priest, according to what Jesus said. I am living in the last days. I am a messenger of heaven. I am called to represent, to represent Jesus. No matter how poorly I do it, I'm going to keep pushing towards that goal. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in Jesus Christ. I am his inheritance in the saints. He is my inheritance and I am his. Amen? All right. <laughs> I'm preaching to myself. I love it. All right. I'm the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. Morning star means the night will end. Morning, evening. Night, daytime. Okay. What he's prophesying is here is remember this. And you're listening, child of God. Remember this, the night will pass. The night of this earth's sinful existence is going to break into the dawn of a new day. Okay, it's not, it may be reflected politically, it may be reflected in the seven mountains, it may be reflected, who knows, in a million ways. It definitely, as it nears, will be reflected in the great harvest the Bible talks about at the end of the age. He says, I gave you the former rain. I gave you the latter rain. Now I'm going to give you the former and the latter rain together. One final conclusion of a um, outpouring of the, the rain of heaven. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say amen. The spirit of the Lord. I'm going to pour it out like rain. I'm going to give you, it's going to be so much rain that it's going to cause the harvest to explode. And then I'm going to return. That's coming. He says, and when that's done, you're going to see the morning star return from heaven. Okay, morning, think of what that's saying. Morning is what? Hi, Mom. Love you. What is morning? Morning means the night's done. The night's over. It's past. Okay, 
we are going to live to see the darkness pass. You got to believe that's actually made to help you, okay, right? That's not just all doom and gloom because the world is all doom and gloom, right? And we need to not be ignorant of his devices. I get that. I do that. We need to tell people what's going on. I do that. But my goodness, don't ever let the glorious, the Bible calls the coming of the Lord our blessed hope. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Strengthen each other. You're supposed to be taking hope in the coming of the Lord. All right. So, <laughs> this is good. Somebody say amen. The Spirit, Holy Spirit, talks. Are you listening? The Holy Spirit speaks. I, you know, some of these things I say, I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. I'm really not. I know most of you know these things. But we need to come back and remember they need to be, they don't just need to be locked away in the deep, dark dungeon of our past memories. They need to be alive and in front of us right now today. That's why we keep coming back. The Bible says that's why we're supposed to be provoking each other to good works. Okay? And you can't sit alone in a cave and provoke somebody else or be provoked. So we're trying to keep it alive and in front of us. The Spirit says something. Look what it says. Revelation 22. The Spirit says, come. Listen close. The Holy Spirit is saying, come, Lord Jesus. He is. You remember again, foundational stuff, right? Hang on with me. Just listen close. Remember that the Holy Spirit prays. It says the Spirit knows how to pray with groanings that cannot be uttered. When we pray in tongues, I want to, can I just admonish you real quickly? I know what it's like to stop praying in tongues for a while and have it become like marbles in your mouth. Please don't believe that that is how it's supposed to be. Here's, here's something that most Christians don't believe, but I guarantee you it's true. Some of this is practice. It's not uber-duber, spiritual, supernatural, angels and demons. No, no, no. You know what? You just don't do it enough. I'm sorry. Again, I'm not trying to be mean, but I want to kill this lie because it feels awkward because I haven't done it so much that now that's just my new normal. No. No, you start praying in the Spirit. And before you know it, it may take days. Oh, no, I can't do anything for more than one day. Yes, you can. You're disciplined. You've got the Spirit of the Lord. You can do it. You know, sometimes these things, they... We don't do them for a long time. We fall out of practice in doing them. And then we want some lightning bolt from heaven to ignite us again. No, you do it. Get in your room and start praying. Time. Say, okay, I'm going to spend, today, I'm going to spend 10 minutes. Why is it that we think it's so unspiritual to just do something based on dedication? This, it's like the generation today. Everything has to be like provoking you, like grabbing a hold of you and dragging you into it. Oh, was, I was totally out of control. No. No, you need to do it. Take that 10 minutes. Okay, this is Papa Jim talking to you, okay? I'm just trying to be real. I'm, I'm trying to tell you the truth. Take 10 minutes. See, I'm going to pray. I don't care how I feel, okay? So when you start out, I don't care if I feel anything. I am going to muddle through. I'm going to pray in the Spirit. I'm going to pray in tongues for 10 minutes. I will not stop until 10 minutes is over. Tomorrow, it's going to be... 11 minutes or 15 or whatever, then 13, then 15, then 20. And you know, you won't have to do that very long before the Holy Spirit, the great intercessor, Jesus, the great intercessor who prays through the Holy Spirit that's in you, right? That's how it works. Remember that? We'll start igniting you. You, the Bible says, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, which is defined in Corinthians as praying in an unknown tongue. Praying tongues. I'm going to get a t-shirt one of these days that says, I pray in tongues. And I'm going to go out and see how many people I can offend. Okay, not really. Not, I'm not trying to offend people. All right. That was all under the, uh, the heading, the Spirit has something to say. He not only wants to speak through you to people, he wants to speak through you to God. And he does that through praying with the understanding, that's Bible, and praying with the Spirit. It's both. And then there's singing too, but I won't go into that. So, the Spirit is saying, come. Now, we always quote this, the Spirit and the Bride say, 
come. And that's true, right? <clears throat> Hi, Haley. I read your posts. I love them. Keep it up, girl. All right. The Spirit and the Bride say come. Now, now, typically, and I'm just saying, I don't know, maybe no one else does this, but when we quote this, we're mostly thinking about the Bride, okay? We need to remember the reason the Bride is, is saying come, praying come, Lord Jesus, right, is because first it is the Holy Spirit, with or without your knowledge or permission or participation, are you listening? He's praying, Lord, come. He, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit and, mid parentheses, the bride say, well, if the Holy Spirit's saying something, yes, he says it to people, but really, this is a prayer. You don't say, come, Lord Jesus, to me. You say, come, Lord Jesus, to me. I wonder if we'd miss this. The Holy Spirit says to the bride, the bridegroom, come, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. We reflect what he's saying. Again, without our permission, without our knowledge, without our cooperation or participation, he's doing it anyway. And then we have the opportunity to join that prayer and say, come, Lord Jesus. When was the last time you were in a prayer meeting and anybody prayed this prayer? I'm just being honest, okay? Or when was the last time you were on your knees and you said, Lord Jesus, come? All right. Does it matter? If it didn't matter, it wouldn't be in here. All right, spirit and the bride. Now, it's worthy of mentioning the last relational context between God and human beings in the Bible is the bride. That's important. It's not the only thing. It's not the most important thing. But just think of this. The last way the church is mentioned in the Bible, the last time that it's called anything, it's called a bride. That matters. Why is that? Because the emphasis through the Holy Spirit, hi, Esban, my brother, God bless you in Africa, I love you. Where are you? Are you in the country? Uh, oh, yeah, no, you're in Kenya. Good, good, good. Okay, let me say that again real quick. Okay. <clears throat> the Spirit and the Bride is saying, come. The last emphasis, the last thing the church is called is not the church, the ecclesia. It's not called... Uh, sons. It's not called daughters. All of those are accurate. And it doesn't mean because this is the last thing that we are called that it's the most important thing we're called. Actually, I kind of think it is because love is the most important thing. But what I'm trying to say is sometimes we think, no, no, it's all about being sons. It's all about this. It's all about being servants. It's all about being messengers. And we just go freaky on it. No, listen, listen to me. There's a reason God chose to end the story of his church, his kids, his people, his servants, his loved ones, his family. These, there's a reason the last mention of them is a bride. Okay, worth thinking about. Okay, worth talking about. Why? Why, why did you do that? Why did you not say, you know, the spirit and the sons and daughters? or the Spirit and the servants of the Lord. Now, you don't have to diminish those, okay? Hear me, you don't have to make those less than to value what the Lord is saying here. All right, that's another lesson. Spirit and the bride say, come. This is about, come Lord Jesus. And again, I want to emphasize, the reason is not just to persuade him to return. The reason is that your heart needs to be a flame with the desire to look upon his face. And the Bible does say we can hasten the Lord's return. All right, come. And then it says, and let him who does a thirst. Okay, this is not some kind of a little side note that the Lord just kind of tacked on for good measure. He's connecting the thirst of the human heart for his return with the prayer of the Holy Spirit that he's praying and what the bride is praying Come. It says, and let him who thirsts say come. Pray come. Come to him. Jesus said at one time, he says, you believe that in the scriptures you have eternal life, but you will not come to me, the one whom the scriptures spoke about. And now that's a very, very kind of a, I don't know, a very slight nuance. 
And we have to remember, this is about the God-man. This is about a person. It's not just about gaining information about him. You know, and again, these are the words of the Lord. They're not my words. He was not diminishing the Bible. You do not have to diminish the scripture to exalt him. He says, you go to the scripture. Jesus, I want to say it again. Jesus saying it. You go to the scripture because you think in it you have eternal life. In it. If I know the Bible and I know all the words and I, you, you guys know how big I am on the Bible. But he's saying it's, you can actually be a scholar and miss where those scriptures are intending to lead you to. And that is me. He says, you, know, you look at the scripture because you think you have eternal life, but you will not come to me, the one whom the scriptures spoke about. So, whoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. We know he's a water of life. Last one. I've got two minutes. Even so, Lord Jesus come. Same passage, same chapter, chapter 22. We're now in verses 18 through 21. For I testify... I want you to listen to the ominous words of the Lord and yet glorious words. I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. Now, this is the second time he talks about hearing the words of the prophecy of this specific utterance in the book of Revelation. He said in the beginning of it, he said, blessed are those who hear it and walk in his commandments, so and so on. So he pronounces a blessing at the beginning of the book to those who will actually hear internally, hear what the Spirit is saying. Those who read it, those who hear it, those who do it. Okay? He ends the book with a similar phrase. He says, to everyone who, again, hears the word of the prophecy of this book, now he adds a kind of a, a heads up. I don't want to diminish the, the ethos or the intensity of it. It is a danger. He, he says, there's a dangerous thing here, and I want you to be warned about it so you don't accidentally do it or purposely do it, thinking that it really doesn't make a difference. And uh, it scares me thinking about how many people may have done this. I hope I haven't done it. I don't think I have. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in the book. <laughs> oh, I don't like that. <laughs> the Jesus you love said that. The Jesus you love and adore, the meek little Lamb of God, who one day will not come back as a lamb, but will come back with his vesture dipped in blood and a sword coming out of his mouth. Okay. All right. Just, I'm just saying, don't be deceived. Okay. He is not either or. He is both and. Okay. He said, I am telling you, he didn't say this about any other book of the Bible. Isn't that stunning? He said this one book because it matters so much. I tell you, the enemy has made this not matter to us. He has. And mostly it's because we fought over it. And that's really sad. So we're foolish enough to fight over it and then think that it's not important because it causes division and confusion. Oh my gosh. Come on, let's be smart. Okay. He didn't say this about any other book. He says, I will add the plagues. I, me, me, God, or God. He says, God will add the plagues that are in the book. If anyone takes away from the words of the this book, the book of this prophecy, God will take away. No, I, doesn't this does this stun anybody? Let's see. Let's see what Mom said. Three times in chapter two. Yeah, yeah. That's why I did that. That's why I highlighted the words in the Facebook, Mom, because three times he's he's saying he come. Yeah, he says I'm coming. All right. So he says, God will take away his or her part out of the book of life. Did you know there was a place where Jesus said that your name could be taken out of the book of life? Jim, you're such a bummer. <laughs> I just, you know what? In my heart, I've just wrestled with this. I've said, yep, I agree with you, Jesus. You said what you said. I, I'm not going to diminish what you say to make myself feel good. You said, don't you add to this book or the plagues will be added to you. Don't you take away or your name will be taken out of it. And it didn't say, it says God will take it. All right, enough of that. Take a deep breath. God will take away his part from the book of life and from the Holy City. This is talking about eternity. There isn't anything bigger than this. It's a big deal. And from the things that are written in this book. He who testifies of these things says, last thing Jesus says, last thing Jesus says in the scripture. Now, he's been talking ever since into our hearts and through people and writings, and I get that. So don't, 
email me and start talking about how God talks through prophecy. I believe it. I, I, if I didn't believe it, I wouldn't be doing this. But this is the last thing he said in the Holy Scripture. Surely. And this is not surely like Laverne and Shirley. Okay? <laughs> so, sorry. Surely, for sure, I am coming quickly. One of the ways that I rectify this in my own heart about, Lord, you know, you said that 2,000 years ago, is number one, I do believe that a day you cannot measure time in heaven. You can't, because time is an earthly construct. It goes away in heaven. You just, you can't. So a day with the Lord is like a 1,000 years. The Lord in the vast, I mean, if you were to put eternity in years, it would be a number that you couldn't even create. Okay, so in the vast expanse of eternity, it is quickly. It literally, he's not like, <laughs> I said it, but I didn't really mean it. You know, no, it really is quickly to him. Okay, um, and the, that's, so that's one thing. The other thing is, I got to stop here. The other thing is, is you're going to go quickly. Compared to eternity, which will last forever, you will be alive a billion years from now. Think about that. This little of life that you're in, 50, 60, 70, 100 years, is nothing. So his coming is quickly, the way he measures time. You're, you're going to him as quickly, okay? So this is not a lie. This is not a, you know, kind of like a metaphor for something else. No, this, it, it really does mean quickly. All right. Surely I am coming. I like the two words, both coming. I want that established in my heart. And quickly, I want that established in my heart. Even so, last, the last thing, now this is the message you're speaking this, not Jesus. I love this because I, I think this is John saying this. I think he says, in obedience to the Lord, yea and amen, even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. One of the things I saw in this passage, and I'm done, that, I, that the Lord emphasized to me this morning, I hadn't really seen it in as strong a terms, is the words, even so. The world, is, the world is in a mess, even so. I am not ready, even so. You know, you go to uh, mom's house, and mom is making dinner, and, uh, and, and she's not quite got all the finishing touches on, and you want a taste, she says, I'm not ready, and you say, even so. Remember Jesus when he was at the wedding of Cana? Uh, he said, the mama, it was flip-flop, the mama came to him and said, uh, I need you to do something. Do a miracle, make some wine, whatever. And he says, I'm not ready. And then her response, I don't think she says these words, but basically this, that was an even so moment. Don't allow the conditions of your life or of the earth to keep you from praying this prayer. Well, my kids aren't saved, even so. He didn't say pray the prayer when everything looked right to you. He just said pray it. Why? Because it will help engender a greater uh, desire and a readiness. Jesus preached readiness for his return. He says you need to be like men and women who are waiting moment by moment for their Lord to return. And that's not always natural, is it? Sometimes that just goes against life. So he gives us this prayer to help us stay watching and looking and ready for his return. Even so, regardless of what the world or anybody looks like, even so, Lord Jesus. So Lord, we pray, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly in your name. Amen. All right, I will not be on the rest of the week. I am taking a break. I'm sorry if that hurts anyone's feelings, but I need it. I feel like the Lord said to do it, so I'm going to do it. I love you. Uh, those of you who are on the class, we'll see you tonight. Those who are not, I will see you next Monday. God bless you, and give yourself permission to have a great day.